Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. With Randy Corporan. I'm KLC. This is the podcast for Wake Up Wake with up. Randy Corporan. Listen to Wake Up with Randy Corcoran live, live weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on KLZ AM 560 The Source or through our online stream at 560thesource.com. Share this podcast with your friends and be sure to like us at Facebook at Wake Up Wake with Randy Corcoran. Up. On KLZ AM 560 The Source. Have you ever took you you know taken your tongue and stuck it to like a flagpole uh, when it's below zero outside? You get your tongue the flagpole. That's how I felt this morning in the global warming drive I had from Monument, Colorado to downtown Denver. I no kidding, man. What I do? I shoveled global warming for a good half hour this morning just to get the cars out. Thank goodness I've got boys to shovel all the global warming. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Wake Up with Randy Corcoran show. <laughs> Clearly, I am not Randy Corcoran. I am, though, Joe America. And I'm Dan America, and it is just great to be here this morning, other than the drive. Oh, yeah. Well, again, uh, I don't know. I, I get really frustrated with the way people drive. you got some people that drive like a bat out of Hades coming up your rear end. It's clearly bad weather, bad conditions, and they're still deciding, I'm going to drive 80 come hell or high water. I'm just going to drive 80. I don't, I don't care. <clears throat> they drive by and slosh stuff, slide, spin a little bit. And then you've got the mom and pop shop. Oh, I'm so scared to drive on it. Then what are you doing out on the freeway if you're scared to drive? They're driving like literally 25, 30 miles an hour. Yeah, you so know you're that. stuck between this rock and a hard place. Exactly. That's exactly what happened to me down by uh, Lincoln and, on I-25, right through that That's construction about where zone. Was that? Yeah. And the semi-truck's coming up at me, and he's going about 10 over. Yep. I'm going the speed limit, and of course the people right in front of me are going about 20 under. Yeah, and you just really want... Want to slam on your brakes to oh, yeah, not hit always, somebody? That's, that's always, always good in really ice, good on the snow ice. conditions. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh goodness gracious! Well, I can't even see out the window right now because it's still dark outside and it's cloudy outside, and the guys are down in the parking lot shoveling more global warming by the by the tonnage. Yeah, I'm going to bury our cars because we had to park in the spot that wasn't plowed yet. True that. I noticed that when we parked there. That so uh, I have to have uh, you and Zach pull me out with your four wheel drive. Well, he's got the smaller four-wheel drive. I just want to see how, how bad and awesome his pickup really is. It's got to be better than mine. I've got a Ram four, you know, four-wheel drive, big truck, and I don't know. I still get a little slippage and slidage going on. It's all good. It's all good. Well, welcome to 2015, everybody. Happy uh, New Year. Happy New, happy New Year. It's uh, January 2nd. We missed the first, but isn't it kind of cool to know we're the first live show Broadcasting from KLZ. I mean, KLZ's definitely taking a broadcast risk at this. I mean, kicking off the year with you and me? Wow. The, oh, no other station would even attempt such no. a thing. This well, a there's a bold station. move there. There is. It's huge. Something serious with that. And now, 2015, January 2nd, the GOP, all the new people get sworn in. They're all a part of it. I've seen several places across the states where new sheriffs, actually midnight, they were at their, their uh, New Year's Eve parties, and at 12 o'clock, somebody was there, some efficient, and they were swearing them in as the new sheriffs. Uh, there's a new sheriff in town, you know, swearing them in. I thought that was kind of cool. Well, there was a big controversies down in El Paso County, where you're from. Over yeah, the sheriff, well, that was one of them that was they that were doing. Was that one of them at midnight? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Getting, them, getting the new guy in and the old guy out. And, of course, there's been a controversy going on with the sheriff down there. But, yeah, I mean, this is it, 2015. So now it's time for these people that we put into office to actually show me now. I, I It's Missouri that's the show me state. And I, I'm all in favor of don't tell me, show me. Don't tell me all the crap you're going to do when you get to Washington, D.C., or when you get into your local, your state government uh, offices. Um, show me. Tell, show me what you're going to do. So... It's 2015, January 2nd. You are the first one to prognosticate. Sorry for you people in Boulder. Um, he's going to um, give us his vision for the future. My guess. Your guess. <laughs> your your opinion, as the French would say. What do you think is going to happen with our, our politicians here in 2015? One of two things. They're either going to have a spine or they're not. 
And boy, I'll tell you what, with that last vote on the, what do they call it, the communist bill, the whatever that. 1.1 1. 1 trillion? One, I just. But that I'm just, didn't include, I am that didn't so, include the new guys. That didn't include the new guys. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll t- what's really going to show us if there's any sort of what lies you like to say, cojones down there in mm-hmm. in D.C. Those are way worse for you. Is if we over. can get 30 Republicans to stand against Bonner, Boehner, whatever his name is. Boehner. Boehner. And, and make him actually have to work to become Speaker of the House again and have people actually run against him. Okay, so let's just retract some data here. President uh, Obama, or as I like to say, Barack Obama, uh, Barack Hussein, America's first half-white ruler, he has never submitted a budget on time for himself. I think his deadline is February, right? Something like that. You know, it's February something. He's always late, at least a month, never on time. Um, He's already promised to veto anything that the GOP puts forth. Doesn't matter. They could say whatever you want, Obama, and veto because he just wants to be able to do that, which is great. The more he can veto anything our guys put forward, that's great. Love that, because it shows just what an idiot this guy is. But at the same time, he's never on time with his budgets, what he submits to the GOP. He's already promised that he's going to veto anything that comes across his desk from them that doesn't really reflect his personal views. We've got the Department of Homeland Security money that's running out. What are they going to do about that? Um, what do you, what do you think? I mean, what, d- doesn't it already seem like it's sort of like, I don't know, going into a fight when you know you can't win walking into it. Right. But in this case, why I, would you go in the ring? Would you do that? If you knew you couldn't win, would you get into the ring with somebody that was well, so, sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to do trench warfare, like in World War One. You just got to draw the lines. You just got to say, no, you're not advancing any further. I'm not going to be able to cross and get any more territory either, but you're, you're not going anywhere. I'm stopping you right here. The insanity stops right here. And right now that's the best we can hope for with the veto pen um, is that we just throw out, you know, we, we keep, Repeal Obamacare. I say repeal Obamacare once a week. Send that to his desk, make him veto it once a week. How about they just defund it? Well, defund it once a week. Defund, just, just keep the pressure on him so he's the obstructionist, so he's the one that's not getting anything done, which is good. Okay, so which we, is, we which do is that. Good. We do that, and, and the media, the mainstream media, the biased media, what's their portrayal of, of uh, the GOP? Well, they're they're always going to say it's the GOP's fault, the conservatives' fault. This, they're just they're still in 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 the bag with the, for the president. They're still on his side, which I have no idea why. Especially with this, how he's been trying to shut them down, how he's been probing into what they're doing. I mean, what, remember that? Who's that? Zach? Who's that gal? Um, that reporter gal that wrote about how? Do you remember her name? Cheryl Atkinson. When she went in and she talked about you know how it's just. We're, we're the cheerleaders for, for Obama. You step against us, we're shutting you down. And she got a little upset about it. She that. did, and which is fantastic. But I'm, I'm hoping people are waking up. I, I think that, you know, Obamacare is at an all time low as far as a, um, approval ratings and, and things like that. I just, I'm, a, I'm really afraid of his, uh, his executive order pen, though. That's the one I'm afraid of because the the minions really in just the, does whatever he wants yeah, to do. They're just they're going to do. It, but legislatively, the best that we can hope for is just to stop the insanity and, like you say, defund things. But they got to have the balls to do it. You know, I mean, Michelle Bachman was right. Shut it down. Who here in the Colorado area, wherever you're listening, who here cares? Even what's going to happen? Do you even care? See, I'm of the cynical belief that most of these people that are listening right near right now just they don't care because they feel hopeless and helpless and it doesn't matter what they want or what they believe or what they would love to see happen. They're so used to it doesn't matter what we do, <clears throat> whatever we end up trying to do, it's not going to happen anyway. Whatever these guys promised us when they got elected, they're not going to do it anyway. So what the hell does it matter? Well, we've had enough of the um, uh, Liberty people or the Tea Party people in Washington to stop a few things and to right. keep things from happening. Thank God. Which, which is which is hope. I mean, if 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 that wouldn't have happened, we'd have cap and trade right now. Could you imagine what that would be like with your electric prices to actually have it full fledged legislated? 
Um, you know, instead of having to go I through the I don't have that. electric. I live like an Amish person yeah. now. <laughs> I've got hurricane lanterns and and a couple of uh, flint flint stones and, you know, yeah. But let's say they would have passed it, which would have guaranteed our electric rates to go up some 20, 30, 40 percent. Yeah. Um, and then given the EPA the power to actually go do that. Now, right now, the EPA and the administration are having to go around Congress trying to do things backdoor deals, trying to, you know, like, like when we had on, um, uh, Kirk, Phil Kirpin, mm-hmm. uh, when we were filling in for Ken last week, um, when he was talking about, you know, how they're going to try to go around now and, and threaten the states and say, hey, we're going to hold back your highway money or whatever kind of money if you don't start up. Yeah, they did that our, to us in Texas. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the states now can fight back, where if it was a law by the Congress, they'd have a uh, much more difficult time. So there are things that we are we are holding back, or in a, in a way you can say we're winning. So there needs to be some kind of banner or broadcast or sort of what, you know, what, what Randy normally does here and what the other, the other show hosts do here at KLZ is there needs to be somebody informing the people that there is forward progress. That, that there is actually something happening because I think most people are literally in the dark because there is nobody talking about it. There is nobody talking about the things that are happening. The only thing we hear are from the ABC, NBC, NBC and CBS uh, or MSLSD, some of these other news outlets that all tell us all is lost Everything is horrible. The world is coming to an end. The sky is falling, and it's it's all those damn Republicans' fault. Yep. And that, that's the message that we're always being fed, that we're being told. And if there is any progress, if there is anything happening that is positive or good or or noteworthy of news, we don't hear about it. Yeah, well, we kind of have to look at this like adults. So we have to, we have to kind <laughs> Stop. of. I know. We- that's the first problem. Right there. All right. Do you know what the difference between the U.S. Army and the Boy Scouts? What's the difference? Boy Scouts have adult leadership. <laughs> the, the, the problem is, sorry, I could say that. I'm former Army. So the, the, the problem is, is uh, when you say look at it like adult, what does it even mean? Well, I mean, just I was looking just saying, at it intelligently, looking at it objectively? Yes, it, especially from what the mainstream media is putting out. So think of the mainstream media as uh, children supporting their their wants and their dreams sure. and, and all that kind of stuff, right? So when when you know you're doing a good job is when? When your kids are upset with you. Uh, Dad hates me. Dad took away my computer. Dad did this. Dad did that. So just imagine the mainstream media being like your kids, reporting on what you've done to them. So in a sense... That's not what as, the purpose of the mainstream no, but, media but is. As a, in a way it is. But as, in no, a it's sense, not. As mainstream a, media is supposed to report facts and news, oh, they have not that, opinionated BS crap. They haven't crap. done that in years. I know that, but that's their job. So we have to interpret what they're doing. So the more they complain, yeah, the great. more we're they're the upset. Court. Yeah, the more upset they become, the more, the more we know we're doing our job. Uh, welcome to Wake Up with Randy Corcoran Show. Clearly, we are not... Randy Corcoran. Uh, we're Joe and Dan America who, uh, have the Joe America show, uh, every day, 7 to 8 a.m. on, uh, on the internet and hopefully sometime soon, maybe getting something more permanent here. We'll see. Who knows? God only knows what's going on. But for the meantime, we get to do all these great fill in opportunities. So it's great to fill in for Mr. Corcoran this morning. I love it. Who hopefully is still enjoying his holiday week, two weeks. That guy gets a lot of time off. My goodness. He's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. He's nice. All these lawyers get $500 an hour and all the time off they want. But we appreciate it. But we appreciate it. Yes, very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Not just to be clear, no complaints here. I wonder how Mark is doing. Mark Zarlingo? Yeah. Yeah. Haven't heard hey, Mark, if you're listening, call in. Call in, man. Give us As a matter of fact, this is like the call-in show. It is. Because we have no guests lined up except for Matt Arnold at 7. So yep. we are just, hey, we want to know what you're thinking. We want to know what you got going on. We want to know uh, any New Year's plans, dreams, hopes, schemes, yeah, what is your, what is, what is your, we, every year, at, I don't know, maybe Zach, you do it too, I don't know, but we, in our family, we have, we don't do resolutions. We do year in review kind of a what was last year and last year for our family it was the education year we learned a lot a lot of things happened in our lives and we learned a lot 2015 we're looking at the year of new beginnings so we kind of like have a i don't know if it's an epitaph or not but it's certainly a kind of a something that we would call what is 2015 going to be for you 
You know, we've got a lot of things in America that 2015 can be. We got new people getting out into D.C. that you know hopefully can and will make a difference. We got a lot of new people in different states that are hopefully going to make some differences in the states on the state level. So it really is possible for America to have a, a sense of new beginnings this year. Yeah, I'm I'm curious, really curious to see what Ken Buck's going to do. Is he going to be the fighter he says he's going to be, or is he just going to? You know, roll over and be with the establishment. It'd be real interesting. I, I'm just, I really want to see. You're not picking a fight. You're just being no, honest. I really want to see what these guys, are there 30 Republicans out there with enough guts and enough uh, fortitude? And, and do they really believe in their principles and values to stand up against Boehner? Uh, just 30 of them. Are there enough? So that we can know. have that process. So we can go through and find out if we can get a good speaker of the House. You know, Zach could run for Speaker of the House. He could. I, I, Anybody I, I could be like Speaker him. of the House. I, I vote for him. Me too. Of course, I don't know. He was playing Candyland this weekend. I don't know. And he was, also was playing yeah. country music coming back. Well, in. I like the country music. Candyland, board, when he shot a picture of that, it scared me. Look, hey, come on. Good. That's a great game. <laughs> Can it? No, when you start playing shoots and ladders, then you know, then you're really getting after it. That's that's gameplay right there. Shoots and ladders. Do you do you ever play the ants in your pants game? Oh, yes. Uh, or uh, don't spill the beans. Yes. I remember those games when I was a kid. And... You know, the one that always freaked me out. I knew I was going to get electrocuted. Was uh, the surgery one? What do they call that? Where the operation? Like, operation. I just knew. <laughs> yeah, that buzzer one. I knew I was going to be like, <laughs> you're fried. All right, so we got some dates coming up, some deadline dates. February 2nd is Obama's budget deadline. I was right, it's February. It's the beginning of February, though. Okay. And uh, he is required under the law to submit this budget proposal to Congress by the first Monday of February. And what happens to him if he doesn't? Nothing. Nothing, Nothing, because he's Barack Hussein, America's first half-white ruler. Then February 27th is when the DHS funding runs out. And GOP, GOP leaders have two months to decide how to handle that funding. So the $1.1 trillion spending bill that Congress passed at the end of the lame duck session, it only extended it through February and didn't allow for any spending increases. So Republican leaders chose a short-term solution to satisfy conservatives who demanded action to defund Obama's immigration. Act. I don't know why they just didn't def- Why didn't they just say no? Why didn't they just say no? I, yeah, somebody, yeah. I don't, this is when I wish I'd have taken the blue pill instead. You know, <laughs> no, well, the the you know they're going to come back and say, well, we couldn't get anything through the you know because the Democrats still controlled the Senate back then. What? And so what? Shut it down. What, the, it's the lies that bother me the most. Where you know we can't shut down the government. Every freaking Friday at five p.m., the government shuts down. For 48 hours. Well, I like what Tom Tancredo said. You know, only uh, non-essential personnel will be will, n- will not be required to come in when you know, during a snowstorm or something like that. It turns out that's like 80% of the government. So 80% of the government doesn't even the government have to show non-essential up because they're non-essential personnel. Including Obama. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't he be non-essential he's gotta, personnel? You know, he's got to go golf and destroy people's weddings. Well, he certainly acts non-essential. I mean, he doesn't ever, you know show up for anything do you believe that he oh, didn't course. know he was interrupting that yes he did don't did you say hear, that did you hear crap. that he called hear that. he called him up they have a recording of the phone call where he calls him up and says you know i didn't know i didn't know i'm so sorry i didn't know he found out from the media yeah, he, found he found out, out reading out from, it in the newspaper just yeah. like the rest of us did because you know and, and and it couldn't have been from you know cnn or msnbc or any of those because they wouldn't have reported that as a negative so he must covertly watch either the Blaze or Fox News and doesn't admit to it. I just can't stand it. It's the only lies, way he knows what's lies. going on in the country. Their campaign to block funding might ultimately fail. Congressional Research Service report from October 2013 government shutdown found that even if the government closes, immigration-related services would continue to operate. Democrats have argued that maintaining um, an outdated funding level, an outdated fu- <laughs> for them, if if you said, if I said, sweetheart, we only made thirty thousand dollars this year, we're only going to make thirty thousand dollars next year. We have to maintain the same budget. We have to keep the same budget. My wife would not turn around and say, 
But but that's decreasing our income. That's decreasing our spending. Joe, mm. that's outdated funding levels. That's outdated. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, that might actually be exactly something I like, would say, because I want a new toy or something. Sure. You know? But but not only, I mean, it's so bad that they complain about that they didn't increase it enough and they consider that a cut. Yeah. Anything that's not an increase is a cut to these idiots. Or if it's, let's say that... You're an idiot. Let me tell you something. If you don't increase something, but you don't take anything away, it's not a cut, you morons. It's... A spending freeze. It is don't spend more than you have. Right. Do you not understand basic economics? I mean, it's so bad. How do you live at your house? It's so bad. Oh, you know what? (laughs) I know how they live. They take underhanded deals from special interest groups. Ooh. That's what they do. That's what they do. Well, you know, it's that's so, how you go in making a hundred thousand dollars a year and come out a multimillionaire. That how do they they Ah, that just frustrates me. Frustrates me to no end. How do you do that? Well, they make one hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year. You're right. Every one of them goes in there and comes out a millionaire. They all get book deals. They all get special speech deals, and they all somehow end up making millions. And then who of really buys these books and reads them? I don't know. I I don't get this. I need to. I've got friends that are in the publishing business. I need to call and find out how the hell can one hundred and fifty or two hundred books be on the number one bestseller list. What the hell is that? Well, and then, well, look at the payoffs. I mean, look at the big advances. Rod Bader got. has the number one bestseller book, How to Live oh. Like Crap in D.C. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. <sighs> Plus, they get these major advances for doing but yeah, that Yeah, that's what I was saying. You know, that's, that's the payoff right there. They get the major advance, and the book company takes the hit. Yep. But they, they must write it off or something. I don't know anything about publishing. You probably know more about that than I do. Well, I know in the record industry, they, they if one album out of ten, and it's usually based on one or two songs on the album, record labels are just another word for bank. They just bankroll stuff. And they're, they're betting on the come that one of these is going to make a hit, and it will substantially pay for all of the losses that they have. I mean, they've just got all these loss leaders just to push stuff out. So I'd imagine publishing is sort of the same way. I don't really know anything about publishing. I don't, I'm, I'm not a book writer yet, but I'm going to, and I'm going to have a number one bestseller on the New York times. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It just drives me nuts. And these people just somehow think economics in Washington, DC are different than economics in their own freaking houses. Well, it is because they live in a world that we will never understand. Uh, I mean, it's the only place where if normally we increase the budget by 5% and we only increase it by 3%, that's a budget cut. Welcome back to Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. And and Randy has said it before. It's not like waking up in the morning. It's like just wake up. Get your heads out of your butts and kind of get with the program. Do you not see what's going on in your world around you? Wake up, people. You're in zombie land. If you think... Isn't my world just lovely? Isn't America fun right now? No, it's not. You need to wake up and do something. Well, it's just like in Rome. You know, keep them fat, dumb, and happy, and they won't know what's going on. Was that Caesar that said that? Or I I want the historical... Well, but it's true. just like in Rome. Yeah, that's keep, them fat, Rome. Dumb. keep them fat, dumb, and happy, <laughs> and fighting each other in the arena. Exactly. That's right. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Yeah, because that's what the Christians did. They yeah. fought in the arena. No, they just kind of sat there stupidly and took it. Oh, they were the lambs going to slaughter. Watched a really good. I don't know. I'm such a, a historian. I love. I just love the study, especially of, of biblical history. Uh, in a week or two, there's a really nice, uh, supposedly a really huge. Uh, historical movie show special that's going to be coming on. I'll find out more and get it to you, Zach, so you can let people know about it. But it's going to be um, talking about, it's been 15 years in the making, talking about uh, archaeological and biblical um, historicity. I love that and, stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really supposed to be really, really good. Kind of like Exodus. Yeah. Um, the antithesis to Exodus, kings and gods. Kind of like or Noah. Gods and Noah kings. Movie. Yeah, that ridiculous, rock the, the rock people, the, the spirits of rocks that uh, at least they noticed and did mention there was a creator involved. But uh, anyway, so we're back to talking about deadlines here. This is Joe America and Dan filling in for uh, Randy because uh, he's still off vacationing. But it's kind of cool. We are... First live show. I think we're live. We're live, right? This isn't pre recorded. 
pretty sure. Okay. That'd I'm be just, really weird if it was pre-recorded. Weird. It would. That's, yeah, because that means I trip. wouldn't be here doing this right now. Yeah. I just love issues with space time communities. <laughs> <laughs> so, Zach, run a level one diagnostic for us here and get it I, all squared away. I will. All right, thank <laughs> you. For you Star Trek fans out there. Um, we're looking at some of the deadline dates coming up here with a new GOP, new people coming in, new opportunities. We're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Corey Gardner, if you're listening in your offices that say, I'm sorry, Corey Gardner is not available as he's moving right now. He's moving into his new office right now. I'm sorry. If you'd like to reach Corey Gardner, it just sucks to be you. Um, March 15th, we have a debt limit suspension. That expires. The debt limit that they that they So, so they, they actually... Now, let me get this right. I'm usually pretty up to date on this stuff. So they, they, <laughs> they actually passed something that says we're suspending the debt limit. So there, there was no debt limit. So they could just spend whatever they wanted to until, what would you say, March 15th? Yeah, March 15th. Nice. Congress in February. You know, we're uh, going to do that at our house. I think we're going to have unlimited <laughs> spending now until March 15th. What do you guys said, want? I mean, a couple Porsches. Sure. Uh, Why not? Jet. Well, I thought you already I mean, said that your heck? wife yeah, had no budget limits. <laughs> Oh, sh- she might be listening. Say nothing. <laughs> Say nothing. <laughs> By the way, dear, I love you very much. And thank you for letting me come on the radio this morning. <laughs> Thanks for letting me go out and play. Yeah, there is a tethered electrical source attached to his behind, so she does zap him when she needs to. Yeah, Congress, Ouch. Congress in February approved a clean increase of the debt ceiling that authorized the Treasury Department to borrow as needed without limit. Through March 15th, 2015. Wait a minute. Let's, let's just stop for a minute. Congress in February. Okay. When was February? That's not the one coming up. That would be the one in 2014. That was last year. Yes. So Congress in February last year approved a clean increase of the debt ceiling that authorized the Treasury Department to borrow as needed through March 15th without limit. So basically, unlimited spending Whatever. from, so, these, from the so-called yeah. conservative Republican Congress. Yep, print it, baby. Print. Nice. Did you need some more? I got a, I got a photocopier right over. You need some, Zach? I got a photocopier. It, it, a color photocopier so we could do the green. <laughs> yeah, there's two things running in Washington, D.C. right now. Two machines running very well. And that's the printing press of the money and the paper shredder for the Constitution. Yep, but They're both just, of those running really, really running well. Running we need sound effects for a... Uh, uh, paper shredder going on here. Yeah, that arrangement ends on March 15th, and uh, that's when the debt limit will automatically take effect. And what limit is that, does it say? Uh, well, at that point, Treasury is expected to use... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. At that point, the Treasury Department is expected to use, quote-unquote, Extraordinary measures, end quote. What, what does that even mean? To meet the government's fiscal obligations through the late summer or even the early fall. So basically, they can just keep doing whatever it is yeah, they're doing. The so it doesn't it. matter. It, 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 there is no yeah. deadline. There is There's no, no deadline. Well, you guys just keep doing what you're doing until we get this thing figured out. And then this loser McConnell, incoming state or incoming Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, has repeatedly promised he will not allow the U.S. to default. But GOP leaders are facing new pressure to demand spending cuts in exchange for a debt increase, something Obama and the Democrats are likely to resist. You think? What is McConnell's problem? He's been there too long. What is this guy's problem? We're not gonna. We're not gonna suspend the government. We're not. We're not gonna defund anything. We're not gonna. We're not gonna turn anything off. Well, you got Boehner, you got McConnell, Gardner, all saying the same thing. We can't shut down the government. It'd be a bad thing. Oh, bull crap. So in the meantime, Tom can Rice. Can I say that? Yeah, you can okay. say that. Tom Rice, who's a uh, representative in Georgia, Republican, the next chairman of the House of Budget Committee, told reporters, I guess just a couple of weeks ago, that. Reviving the Boehner rule might be "quote unquote" wise. Oh, what the heck that means? Yeah. That rule had required dollar for dollar cuts in exchange for debt increase. <clears throat> All right, there you go. Just because it says Boehner in it, you should just throw it out the window. So, Dan, 
I'm going to take away $5 of your Starbucks money. <gasps> and in agreement with our debate, I will give you $5 for your Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Ooh. But we are reducing Ooh. your Starbucks coffee cut. by I five. will not stand for this. That sounds fair. That's, that's all they're doing. Yeah. Not only are they robbing from Peter to pay Paul, but they're like down to Timothy now. <laughs> this poor kid. Through them all. <laughs> no, they've hit up everybody. It's ridiculous, right? Am I crazy? I'm not. No, you're. T- it's nuts. It, and 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 that rule had required dollar for dollar cuts in exchange for debt increases. Oh my gosh, I'm just losing my mind. <sighs> Let me have a break so I can go scoop up my brain matter and put it all back in my brain or back in my head here. Joe America and Dan America filling in for Randy Corcoran this morning. Uh, first live show of 2015 on KLZ. Proud to say we did that. Absolutely. And, hey, we would love to hear from you, so give us a call at 303-477-5600. you got to give them a reason to call in. Why? Don't just call in. We want to hear from you. Hi, uh, Dan you know, and Joe. Uh, I woke up this morning, had a exactly. bowel movement, and, uh, yeah. I mean, there's got to well, be a reason a, to call in. You know in. what? That is more um, interesting than what's going on with D.C., it's, that is sad, isn't it? It is. Because do you see it's the same old crap? And well, we're, we're, at least at least if somebody's having a bowel movement, it's new crap. We're we're finishing up with some of the deadlines. All right. We got through March, whatever it was. Now we're on April first. Oh, love April in America. That's the GOP budget resolution following Paul, uh, Paul Ryan's footsteps as the House budget chairman. Price, Representative Price, is likely to unveil a budget resolution. In the spring, that would direct appropriators to rein in federal. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, like that's going to happen. Uh, rein in spe- federal spending. It's possible that Price and the budget chairman in the Senate, Mike Enzi, Republican out of Wyoming, will release a joint proposal to keep the two chairmen on the same page. Why wouldn't they be on there? Don't they have? To, do these people ever sit down and talk to each other, or do they have like? Pages sending notes back and forth like in school. I mean, do, do these people not just go, hey, uh, Zach, you want to go have lunch later today and talk about uh, budgets this afternoon there? You have to schedule that with my uh, secretary. Yeah, my page. I'll get my page. I'll get, I, I'll get my people to talk to your people. We'll do lunch. Yeah, they'll end up having lunch. So instead of raising the sequestration budget caps for fiscal 2016, Price said that he wants to maintain those limits, but eliminate the firewall between defense and non-defense spending. Dissolving that boundary, Price said, would give Congress the flexibility. Gosh, these words that they just irritatingly use that are just so senseless. Just the words that they, we need the flexibility. We, we need the ability to, no, you, you want the toys. You want to play is what you want. Exactly. You want unlimited, unbridled power. power. That's right. Power. Um, That's what the whole tax code is. It's just power. Divvy up this guy, divvy up to that guy, yep. take care of this, that, boom. He said uh, dissolving that boundary, Price said, would give Congress the flexibility to allocate more money to the military and less to domestic programs. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the hour here. We've got uh, Tom in Aurora who... Uh, Wants to talk about Boehner a little bit. Tom, what have you got for us this morning? Hey, good morning, guys. Just uh, real fast, I had a question for you. You're talking about the Boehner plan. So if you took the Starbucks money and moved it to Brand X Coffee, how does that increase the debt? Aren't they adding more there somewhere? Oh, yeah, because what they didn't tell you is that they're now the ones buying the coffee beans that are being supplied to the coffee shops. There's that's that's where that comes from. More smoke and mirrors than there, than, you know, on the surface. Because really, if you cut the spending, you haven't added to the debt. So that's yeah. I, I'm with you guys. It just makes your head explode, don't it? It uh, does. Yeah, my yeah. We we have a routine uh, crew coming in here to clean up our brains off the floor as our heads explode every five minutes. Yeah, and well, it, they've they've also got the case of duct tape in here. Yeah, thank you. So goodness. we I, use it quite a bit. Well, thank, thanks for thanks for calling in, Tom. I appreciate it. And 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 the reality is, you're right. I mean, some things sound good when you say them or when they say them. But they just don't make sense when you sit down with a calculator or an abacus or a pencil and paper, whatever you're using, and when you add 2 plus 2, it comes to 4. 
That's the beautiful thing I love about math. You can't jack it up. Ah, but then came Common Core. I wouldn't say Common Core is jacking up math. Common Core is just messing people. Have you had to do the Common Core math? I tried. Oh, my gosh. It came straight from Washington. 32. 32 minus 12 equals what? And we'll take the seven minutes over the break we have to do that in order to figure out what that answer is. I've got to start drawing my little squares. Got your squares. I'm got going. Your, I, need a, I need a protractor. Uh, I need a contractor and, and, and a tractor. Don't go anywhere, people. Thanks for the first hour on Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. Stay tuned on uh, uh, a- <laughs> <laughs> KLZ 560 KLZ 560. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Randy Corcoran. Thanks for listening to the podcast of our show, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. Don't forget, I'm chairman of the Arapahoe County Tea Party. Our meetings are the second Tuesday of every month at 6.30 p.m. with candidates, elected officials, and topics of interest to freedom lovers everywhere. No matter where you're listening, please find us on Facebook and Google the Arapahoe Tea Party. Welcome to the Wake Up with Randy B. Corcoran. I am Joe America. And I'm Dan America. Filling in for Mr. Corcoran this morning. First live radio show on KLZ in 2015. Proud to be a part of it. Absolutely. Big, big risk for KLZ. Huge, huge risk. I only hope the suits and executives here fully comprehend the intelligentsia of what they've done here. I don't know. But I'll tell you what. This is the station that's going to make a difference. I love the new lineup. Yeah. So what is it? Ken now from... Yeah, Zach, tell us. We got a whole new lineup going on here. new lineup here on KLZ. It is Freedom 560, 1 to 3 p.m., and then from 3 to 6 p.m., Rush to Reason, and then 6 to 8 p.m., Grassroots Radio. That's awesome. Awesome. And Randy's still on with Wake Up with Randy Corcoran, 5 to 8 a.m. You know, (laughs) when the alarm went off this morning at 3 o'clock in the morning... (laughs) <laughs> it was one of those moments where you have, you know, like, ah, I'm late. <laughs> I know. <laughs> How does he do this every day and not lose his freaking mind? Well, you don't see him between the breaks. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's no webcam in here. Yeah, right. All right. Well, fair enough. Fair no, enough. No, but you're right. Don't you have, you know, you go to bed and you know you're going to oversleep. Yep. And you're so afraid that you're going to get this call. Finally, you look at your phone, it's going to be 8 o'clock and you overslept the whole show. You just know yeah. it. You well, know what's going to happen. Usually it's always, for me, and it's different for everybody. For me, it's usually about an hour beforehand. I start waking up every two minutes, every mm-hmm. three minutes. Just, huh, oh, okay, okay, I still got five, still got 58 minutes here. Huh, <laughs> okay, okay, I still got 56 minutes. Here. Huh, it's irritating. It's like, just get up. If you're going to keep doing it, just get up. I was even thinking honestly, because I was up until after midnight working last night on some other project stuff that I do for, you know, television stuff. And, and uh, I should just stay up. I'll drive down there and just sleep in the freaking parking lot in my truck. Somebody is bound to knock on my window in the morning, I hope. Well, then it never fa- fails. You know, I told everybody at my house, got to be in bed by 10 o'clock. Got to be in bed by 10 o'clock. How'd that work out? Quarter to 12. Yeah. <laughs> I finally laid down. Yep, yeah. that's how it works, you know, because we had crisis, you know, we had this, we had that. Well, I can't just, like, get you know, stop like, work and go on. to bed. I, I, I have to unwind. I need at least an hour to unplug And be mind-numbed robots for a moment. I just have, because my brain is going, this is the problem with being ADD. My brain is like 100 miles an hour all the time, nonstop. And if I don't shut it down, I I mean, I'll just sit there and lay there and be thinking, you know, I'm like Mel Gibson in in, in, uh, the cop movie that he was in. I mean, this is like a 100. I just can't shut down. I have to unplug. I need that time to do that. And so at 1 o'clock this morning... I finally was able to unplug and go to sleep, waking up at 3 a.m. to come down here for the, (laughs) and then my day is stacked today. A whole two hours of sleep, huh? Yeah. That's awesome. awesome. That's why the Zach juice, (laughs) uh, also known as coffee for some people, keeps me going this morning. So we just have no idea what the seven o'clock hour is going to be like. (laughs) By the time we get there, whoo, baby. Yeah, that'll be my third pot of Zach juice, and God only knows. We got Matt Arnold coming in at seven. Matt Arnold, that's right. he's He's Mr. Energy. We were talking about the first hour, if you were listening, uh, for the you know the three people that love us and, and, and listen to us. Um, who knew we were going to be on this morning? And, and sorry for the disappointment for those who thought it was really going to be Randy. Um, 
we were talking about different deadline dates coming up in the in the 20, uh, 2015 year, the, different political deadlines that you know are coming up. Obama's you know submission of his budget and other things like that. When does he have to have all of his tea times scheduled? Well, those were scheduled in twenty thirteen. Those are already scheduled all the way out. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, that's how that's how he was able to know how to screw up a man's marriage in Hawaii that he knew nothing about. Do you, do you buy that phone no. call though? Do you buy that no. phone call? He call. Oh, oh, we know you didn't mean to. You we kidding? Appreciate. It worked out better being at the commander's residency. Anything the president does, the CIA, the IRS, the EPA, the ABC, the DEE, and the FAG, or whoever, all the all the other different organizations in Washington, D.C., they know every place on planet Earth that this man is going to spend any amount of time, schedules, bus routes, Concert, they got it all. Especially when he's out parking cars for people. Yeah, you know, right. And and Michelle's you know taking stuff down from top shelves. It's serving people in targets or targets because you know they sharp they don't sharp shop at target they shop at targets. Yeah, of course he knew. Target's way too violent to shop at. So August first, or I'm sorry, April first is the GOP budget resolution. Kind of talked a little bit about that. Uh, instead of raising the sequestration budget, they're going to, uh, uh, he wants to maintain the limits. So whatever has been on there before, he wants to keep it. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> let's go back to the Boehner rule for a second. Yeah. I am in full support of switching money from Starbucks to Dunkin' Donuts. I'm just saying that. I'm totally in agreement with that. Sorry, you and I have to part company there because Dunkin' Donuts and I just, I, that's not good coffee. I've tried it. Oh, I don't know the what donuts the donuts are. The awesome. donuts are awesome. That's what I'm saying. So what I I'll w- just come by here, grab some Zach <laughs> juice, go over to Dunkin' Donuts. What I really love about Dunkin' Donuts is I can go in and order a dozen donuts and a Diet Coke. So I feel totally good about my purchase. And you don't have to call it some fancy name. You can call it a Diet Coke. A Diet Coke. Mm. That's right. So if the budget resolutions pass in both chambers, lawmakers would have to go to conference and work on an agreement. Yeah, let's let's watch that. <laughs> I'd love to be a fly on a wall on that. So in other words, we're going to go to conference and we're going to, you know, for, forgo all of our values and principles and we're just going to give in. Yeah, pretty mm-hmm. much. Okay. And the agreement could contain reconciliation instructions for relevant committees that could involve rolling back Obamacare, tax reform, or changes to energy policy. And monkeys might fly out of my rear. <laughs> It's not going to happen, man. Well, it could be that Mediterranean diet. I'm telling you, (laughs) these people are not going to roll back anything. They're not. Here's I'm going to predict this right now. They will not defund or stop Obamacare. They will not give way to energy development in America as it pertains to gas and oil and coal. It's not going to happen. It's not. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to happen. No, we just don't have anybody with a fortitude like Harding and Coolidge to actually go and cut the government by 50%. They really actually cut the government by 50%. They really did actually what what the real word, the yeah, real yeah, consideration what cut of cut actually cut means. means. Exactly. And that would be testicular fortitude, just to be clear what kind of fortitude they need to have. And then, of course, the next deadline after April 1st, besides April 15th, I love how they don't put that in there, <laughs> the deadlines for April 15th that all of us have to adhere to. That's just, we just have to. We, there's, no, there's no exceptions to that rule. I just had a listener say they would really rather switch the money from Starbucks to uh, Krispy Kreme. Oh, dude. Yeah. Krispy Kreme. Oh, better than Duncan. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Got to go with that one. Yeah. Well, especially when you watch it come off the conveyor and they go through that yummy... Glaze. I don't care where hot. they come from. It's like hot dogs. I don't want to know what's in it or where it comes from. I just want to eat it. And it's the same thing. I don't care how and where and what kind of machines squirt and squeeze and push and pull things to make a donut a donut. I don't care. I just want to eat it. That's all I want. I just want to enjoy the the, the fruit of my labors of eating a Krispy Kreme donut. <sighs> Creme, if you're going to say it Creme? the right way. Mm-hmm. Creme Kreme. Uh, September 30th, final deadline. Government shuts down. Brrr. I would That's love music to see to that. I, mean, it I, is. Just, I really want it to happen. The government must pass legislation funded, uh, funding the government by September 30th, or the government will shut down. It just, they, they just make it sound like it's, you know, there will cease to be oxygen <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> That's what they make it sound like. It's, it's absurd. 
is it, but have we really become that dependent on them? Are we really that dependent on the government? Not me. Or just the thought of the government? Running? I'm not. I'm not that. What are you deal you dependent that? on them? Absolutely not. I'm not. Are you dependent on no. them? No. And in fact, every day, every Friday afternoon, you know, the world comes to an end. We all die. We all get absorbed back into the cosmos, and then Monday morning at 8 a.m., it, it all turns back on again. It's amazing. I actually do depend on the government for one thing, for What's great it? talk show material. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. See, that is true. That is true. Yeah, thank you guys so much for giving us your unbridled uh, co- uh, life that gives us something to talk about. That would be sad. If there was, if everything was going our way, what would we do? I don't know. That'd be weird. Um so McConnell... I'm and, just trying to imagine that. Yeah, good luck to you. It's kind of like a John Lennon song. Not going to happen. Nope. Imagine all the people. Uh, McConnell and other GOP leaders have signaled... Is that like... Meta, you know, what, what is that stuff? That, the semaphore. Are they using semaphore to signal each other? McConnell and other key GOP leaders have signaled they want to return to regular order and pass individual appropriations bill rather than massive funding packages that are cobbled together in haste. Yeah, sort of like this thing that they just threw together. How many pages were in this thing that they just kind of like... Was it 1,600 or something? Just threw just this nuts. crap together and... Stop. Oh, I hit, read yeah, hand me that over there, would you? Who's got time oh, to read the say, I, I, All right, uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, you have to pass the bill to know what's in the bill. That's right. Well, I learned Thank that you, living in California. Thank you, Nancy. Nancy's awesome. She is. What would you do without Nancy? Um, a lot better. Probably. <laughs> but um, then again, like Zach says, we just wouldn't have the material. I and Maxine Waters. I love Maxine Waters. We're going to take over your companies. Well, first... Your companies? She's fantastic. First, we were told by uh, Barack Hussein, America's first half-white ruler, that all of our companies, all the businesses... I've owned several businesses. You've owned one. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, none of that business was actually developed or done by me. I had nothing to do with it. No. I had nothing to do with it. Everybody around you did. Everybody around me did something. That's right. I did nothing. I sat somewhere sucking my thumb, uh, letting things happen. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how the businesses grew. I don't know. I don't know how KLZ works here. I mean, clearly, uh, nobody, nobody here is working. Welcome to the wake up with Randy Corcoran show. Joe and Dan America filling in for Mr. Corcoran. Uh, first live show of 2015. Kind of nice sitting in and filling in. And uh, we're talking about uh, up and coming deadlines, things that we hope and wish would happen. We were talking at the beginning of last hour. You know, what does 2015, what do you think it holds? What does it hold? What does it hold for you, Dan? What does 2015 hold for you? <sighs> A lot of hope, I hope. <laughs> 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 so I, it's. I, it's just right now. It's kind of like wait and see. Do did all of our efforts in 2014 to change the, the scope of the Senate and the Congress? Are they going to pay off? Are they going to hold back this intrusive government? Now we've got to wait and see. Or are they just going to be spineless politicians and we just got the same old crap? Spine or no spine? Spine or no spine? That is congestion. Consumption be done about it. Of cough. Of cough. Yeah. That's what we're hoping for. That's what we're hoping for. So it's your time to prognosticate yourselves. Tell us what you think is going to happen in 2015. You can call in 303-477-5600. Tell us what you think. This is a good time to let's set the tone right now for 2015 here on KLZ. What do you think is going to happen in 2015? Good things, bad things? You think the people we elected are actually going to do what they say they're going to do? Or perhaps you think they're going to be spineless, mind-numb robots like they always seem to be and just give in and go with the flow, not try to change anything, not rock the boat because nobody wants to piss anybody off. Yeah, well, you know, speaking of rocking the boat, that's why I was a Steve Laffey supporter for Congress, because I figured he would really go and rock the boat. He's never held back on anything he said. And look what he did as mayor in uh, in Rhode Island. And Rhode then, Island. Rhode Island. And then, but, you know, okay, so he didn't he didn't win the, the nomination for the fourth. Ken Buck did. So I supported Ken, and I told him I would. And uh, now, let's see, is Ken going to come through? Is he going to be the guy that, that he said he was going to be? Is he going to be the establishment Republican, or is he going to be the Liberty Republican? That's a great question. Are you really going to be Liberty-minded or not? What do you think? What do you think 2015 is going to hold? How many of you have hope that something good is going to happen? How many of you even care? Does anybody even out there care 
what happens in 2015? Or are you sort of at the end of the rope, at the point where you say, you know what? It just doesn't matter. You know, Joe, we've been doing this for almost a couple of years now. And, and yeah, you know, we, put a, we put a lot of time into this and yep. and uh, energy and effort, you know, and, and, and at a cost. Yep. And, uh, you know, trying to keep up with people, trying to keep contacts, trying to, you know, do these things, go to yep. these meetings, all that kind of stuff. And, it, you know, every once in a while, you start, at least I do, I go, is it worth it? You know, my, yep. you know, should I should I just be concentrating on going out and making money and trying to get as far ahead as I can and try to before the eliminate, world ends? Well, just try to alleviate some of the personal uh, pain, let's say. Yeah. Do you, or do you keep fighting for your country? What What do you do sometimes? So especially when you especially when you, you go out and you knock on doors for somebody like Corey Gardner. And then it's like he stabs you in the back. Just yeah, y'all kind of felt that way, you, yeah, right? Yeah, you did. And then, when, you know, we're going to be talking about this with Matt Arnold, but even when you look at what the Republican Governors Association did, Republican Attorney General Association did, going yep. after Tom Tancredo yep. like that. Absolutely. And, you know, Tom's a guy that resonates with people like me. And for the establishment to come in You know and why just, he resonates with me? Boom. And people like him? Hmm. I'm just tired of the political lexicon. Can't answer a question straight. You're never really sure whether it was a yes or no, an up or down, an in or out. It's double talk. There's just no straight answers, at least with Tom and with Steve, Steve Laffey. I feel like when you ask him a question, you get a straight answer. Whether you like it or not. Yeah. I just tell you the the way it is. That's fine with me. I don't have to agree with you, but help help me have an answer that doesn't sound like when you're done... I'm not really sure how you answered that. Is it yes or no? What was that? Uh, What did that mean? What did that even mean? Yeah. What do you see the future of uh, Colorado? Well, you know, by all intents and purposes, you know, things look pretty grim, but they could be really good. But I'm not really sure. You know, we'll do the best that we can. When we get in there, we're going to fight. It's like listening to these guys at the beginning of a football game, right? (laughs) You know? Uh, so what's your prediction for the, uh, for the, uh, game? Uh, well, we got a good ball team. <clears throat> we got a good ball club. Uh, we're gonna give 115%, and if we, uh, put more points on the board, we will win the game. The hell does that mean? Of course, yeah, of course. If you put more points on the board than the other team, you're gonna win. Yeah. So, so what do you, but what does that even mean? But it's even, it's even worse with these guys because these guys will tell us we're going to put more points on the board than the other team and they don't even try to do that. Yeah. So it's just, it's yeah, just so who frustrating. Who cares about putting points on the board? Right. So we've got, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. Uh, Neil. So oh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Zach. Appreciate that. Uh, Neil is on the line. He's got a comment. What's your prognostication? Sorry for you people in Boulder. What's your prediction? What is your prediction for 2015? Well, uh, Joe and Dan, thanks. Well, good morning, first of all. And uh, Good morning, wanna, Anil. How are you, my friend? I am well. I'm well. Um, I want to say that if on Tuesday the House picks John Boehner as their speaker, uh, let me tell you, Obama will win 2015 and 2016 with his agenda. And um, so it's important that we can try to get 32, 30 to 32 people out of that 67 that voted against the omnibus bill to vote against the speaker. Um, so um, Washington has a different way of dealing with people. Uh, I remember Debbie Fisher won in Nebraska as a Tea Party senator. Pat Toomey won in Pennsylvania. When you get to Washington, uh, all bets are off that anybody's going to hold the Constitution. And uh, that's why, you know, we're, we're, recent reports, John McCain it was trying to take care of some business in Arizona recently and knocking Tea Party people out of the party. And the same thing with Lindsey Graham in Greenville, South Carolina. So um, it's important for people to put pressure on uh, Ken Buck and Doug Lamborn here in Colorado and call as, ma- as much as you can the remaining 67 um, and-, and get them to flip on John Boehner because if that doesn't happen, it's it's very difficult. I mean, we've got to set the momentum right now. Hey, Anil. We can, that's right. Thanks, Anil. Anil, just one quick question for you. How does this, quickly, how does this 30 or 32 work? How, what, how does that math work on this to try to get rid of Boehner? I, I don't know the, the details on that. I okay. just know that, that that's about, I believe, 12 to 15 percent here of the total Republican side. And um, and if you take those numbers, 30, you take those out, then you kind of lose the majority, and the Democrats can easily, you know, sneak somebody in. Sure. So, uh, I think it's, I think it's the, the difference with the majority numbers that we have in the House. Um, but, um, and the other thing is, you know, state and, uh, I mean, county 
Republican elections are coming up uh, in about five weeks here. And, uh, you know, our grassroots conservatives must not give up and must not forget and must not be, you know, lulled into thinking everything is perfect. Um, you know, the state party chair, Ryan Call, is going around giving victory speeches. Um, I can tell you right now the complete state party is a failure. And um, and so we, we can't back off here. Uh, and um, But it, Tuesday is very important. And if we, if we don't win that, it's not nothing's over. But John McCain and Lindsey Graham, they understand it. They're going back to their to their uh, states and the power. Washington wants to prevent the power of the first three words of the Constitution, we the people. And it's yep. up to we the people to start standing up right now like never before. We won't have a nation basically in two years. Yep, that's right. Thanks, Anil, so much. We're going to have to take a quick break here. Uh, we've got Rex on the line and Bruce on the line. Don't go anywhere. Joe and Dan America filling in for Randy this morning. And uh, this hour, we're prognosticating the 2015 year. What do you think the year looks like? What is it? What's going to happen this year? What What are your thoughts? And we've got Rex from Colorado Springs calling in. Is that Pastor Rex calling in? Yes, it is. Well, good morning, Pastor Rex. How are you this morning? I am doing super. How are you guys? Better than I'm we look. And thanks for well. asking. Fantastic. So, yeah, so you're asking about what you think 2015 is going to be like. Yeah, what do you give us a quick 30 uh, uh, second soundbite on what you think 2015 is going to look like to you? Well, to me, I think uh, it really uh, depends on us as the citizens. You know, Dan had mentioned a few minutes ago that, um, uh, you know, sometimes you do get discouraged and you think, well, what am I doing? And, you know, or, or is it having an impact? And I really think it's up to us. I mean, we have to keep these newly elected officials' feet to the fire, and we have to press for what we know is right. And not only do we need to do that, but we need to um, do what we can ourselves. I mean, I even recently ran for a, an office here in Colorado Springs, didn't get it, but I'm thinking about running uh, in the coming city election. We'll see. But anyway, I, I think that it really comes down to what we're willing to fight for. I think it really comes down to what we're willing to, to press for in our own personal lives, in the political realm. I think it comes down to us. Well, you know, Rex, I think you're right. And, you know, kind of use the football analogy here is to, you know, we got to keep making yardage. We're not going to make a first down in every play, and we're sure not going to make a touchdown in every play. But if we can keep moving the ball forward... Maybe we can make some progress, and maybe we can eventually score. Just remember, though, with that analogy, Dan, you only get four downs before you have to turn the ball over to the other side. So let's hope we actually can make first downs somewhere in there. All right, let's let's at least push the analogy to the limit that we want it to be, because I don't want to punt. No, exactly. done a lot of punting. We've done a lot of punting. No, actually, what we've done is not shown up for the game. Yeah, we've done a lot. <laughs> Way too much of that. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate the encouragement, and I, I think you're right. I think it's, you know, don't don't lose hope. You know, let's go biblical for a second. It's it's faith, hope, and love. Can't just be hope. I hope good things happen. I hope this. I hope that. You know what? There's 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 got to be other elements that are involved, too. And part of it, too, is active participation. I appreciate you running for office and all the other people that are doing that. Told Dan the same thing, you know, you can't complain about stuff and, and not get out and run for office. I mean, you got the lawsuit going on, which is great, but, you know, get involved. Run for an office. Yeah, take, take control and, and, and jump in, you know, especially with the two boys that you've got in school. Hey, get on the school board. Jump in and get on the school board. Take control of that school board. Take control of the, the – they don't call it the PTA anymore. I don't know what it's called anymore, whatever <laughs> the parents' uh, uh, rights – I don't know who knows, yeah. but whatever it's called. Well, thanks very much, Rex, for calling in. Appreciate it. We've got uh, Bruce on the line. Bruce, what does 2015 look like to you? Gentlemen, thanks for taking the call, and it's good to hear you this morning. Thanks, sir. Uh, well, I sort of interpret the question to be, what would you like to see happen in sure. 2015? Sure, yep. And um, so many times when you're talking to somebody, there are all these assumptions, and you know all these things about them, so you don't have to actually come out and say it. You don't have to say it. And so when you're having a conversation, you're focusing on either the differences you have in, like, the approach you want to take 
or the difference you have in something else, and you forget to talk about the common things you agree to. And one of the common things that, uh, okay, Republicans agree to, but sometimes goes unstated, is that we really want to see our fellow citizens succeed. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, I would say I would agree with that with Republicans. I'm not sure I would agree with that Democrats and the progressive liberals want to see Americans succeed. Okay, well, I'm just talking about Republicans. Oh, okay, all right. Then, yes, I would agree with you. Okay, and one of the, and that's not ever stated by Republicans. True that, it's not. You know, and that's why I think so many people distrust Republicans, because we don't, Take a moment and say we truly care about the success of our neighbors. And I think Republicans truly do. But because it's never said, most folks just assume Republicans don't care. So then would you say, would you say, Bruce, then that we don't, here's my take. I don't think we project enough what's possible, what we can do, and what we are going to do. I most of the time hear what we don't like, what we don't want to do, and what we don't agree with. That's what I hear most of the time. Would you agree with that? Correct, and that is what I hear, too. But, see, there's one other thing we have to do, too, and that's we have to be genuine, I mean genuine, about our caring. And I know a lot of my Republicans' friends, and they've become in many ways apathetic yep they've become in many ways hopeless they've become in many ways uh they just can't take it anymore and they've lost their true concern for the success of their neighbors i think we've lost the passion i I think that's right so maybe part of the part of the what would i like to see happen for 2015 i would like to see a fire and a passion brought back to the conservative body in our country. And it has to be true, and it has to be genuine. We have to have a true caring for the success of our fellow citizens. You know, for those of us who have been in the military, I think most of us get it. Yep. Even though there's inner service rivalry and the paratroopers dislike the leg infantry and all that sort of goofiness, when you go down to the bottom... There's a true concern, because anyone who's been in the military knows that if that cook doesn't make you a healthy meal... That's right. You're in the dumper, buddy. Yep. Let me tell you, you're going to lose big time. You know, I've always liked, well, the Navy, because once that ship leaves port, every member of that team has to has to participate and do their job, or they're not going to be able to do their job. Yeah, nothing is worse than an upset naval crew with bad cooks on board. I, yeah, I, I hear you. Go. And Th- so I hope that because I think by truly caring, not only are we going to have the voters give Republicans a chance to advance our agenda, but I also think it's going to solve so many problems that we have. Couldn't agree more, Bruce. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate that from Westminster. And those are good words. I think that's something that we should all pay attention to is find find areas of agreement, find areas of encouragement. And then, I mean, you know, I would say probably the, the people that are in the, in the military today that are actively involved in Afghanistan, Iran, and Iraq, and other places where they've actually had to engage enemies and, and that kind of thing, you, you have... Um, you have an objective, and and when the major comes in at seven o'clock, we'll talk a little bit about that. I mean, you you got to know what is your objective, what are you, what are your goals and your plans, and everybody's on the same page with that, <clears throat> and it's a clear message across the board, and and that is something that we've been missing. Yeah, and Bruce Bruce is right that we have to show that we do care, and that's just that's just the way our society has evolved. That you have to show you care. That was one of the biggest problems that Romney had in the last election. Is people would say, you know, who's better on the economy? Romney. You know, who's better on on, uh, global issues? Romney. I mean, by huge margins. And then the question was, well, who cares about you? Well, Barack Obama does. And that's that's where the vote split. Even though it's not true. Yeah. You know? Uh, Conservative, you know, like Rush says, conservatism is compassionate. You know, we let you go and pursue your own dreams. Pursue your own deal. Nobody's telling you how to live. Nobody's dreaming for you. Correct. 
Uh, so we're uh, coming into uh, uh, looking at what is 2015 going to be? What does it look like? What would you like it to look like? And um, I would I would really love 2015 to be um, a great potential. I would like to see it have monumental movement in a positive way where prices on things do go down, where we are worthy of our heritage as American citizens. I would love to see the world look at us again as the, you know, the city on the hill and not the refuse at, in, in the creek, you know, and be representative of what freedom is in the world and what possibilities are available to people. Because I still think we, it, it's weird. Internally, as Americans, we're the only ones who think, ah, there's nothing going on. There's no hope here. You go to any of these other countries and not the politicians and the media nuts, but you ask people, why do you want to come to America? Why are they busting through the southern border to get here? Why? Because Risking this is the labor. greatest country on the planet with the, the most opportunities to pursue and become anything we want to be. Welcome back to the Randy Corcoran Show. Wake up with Randy Corcoran. Wake up. Well, I'm just relieved to know that Dana Lash didn't get cut. She's going to be on at 8 tonight. Yeah, I like that, Dana. That, that was scary, not knowing the new lineup. I mean... Were you a little worried? Were you I scared? Was, I was. Oh, we we're Joe and Dan filling in for Randy because Randy, I guess, has to have vacation. I don't know. We we don't get one. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that average American yet making three hundred thousand dollars in no, the bank that I can yeah. buy a business with. God, that just killed me when she said that. I was really. thinking more like you know, if you have thirty bucks, what can you do? Yeah, is there any business out there I could buy for thirty bucks? Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> here uh, in, in looking at hopes for 2015, I have to do this. Okay. And I apologize ahead of time for anyone. I am an equal opportunity offender, by the way, just so anybody just to be clear on all this. Right. Iraqi media says ISIS militants have contracted Ebola. Okay. Don't go anywhere yet. Hold on. Hold your horses, Dan. It gets better. Reports that Islamic State militants in Mosul have contracted Ebola swirled through the Iraqi media sources on Wednesday. World Health Organization, the WHO officials, said they haven't confirmed the case, but the organization has reached out to offer assistance. Let them die! Oh my gosh! Let them die! Compile, square them all in. And let them Ebola themselves to oblivion. We don't have to ship any bombs. We don't have to ship any personnel. We don't have to fire any bullets. Let them die. Why would you offer these people assistance? Well, Why? Because, because Hillary Clinton said we have to be, you know, sympathetic and mindful of terrorists. So What? Uh, yeah. Just thank God for the box of duct tape. The WHO is going to go and help. These people are idiots. They're idiots. Just contain them. Just contain them and let them. Di it's like, what is it, World War Z? What's with these Z nations? <laughs> Just keep all the zombies on one little island. They'll eat each other, and then there won't be any more zombies. You see what happens? You're going to go there to help these people. You're going to contract Ebola. You're going to fly United Airlines. You're going to come back to Denver, Colorado, and spread it all here. God gave us a gift. I'm sorry, but Ebola in ISIS, good thing. I'm just saying. Let it work its magic. Oh, my gosh. How can... I guess there's no discrimination when it comes to helping people. I don't know. Uh, what if so what if we got people that have nuclear bombs that want to blow up the world and they get radiation sickness are we going to go help them yeah yep i i i just lose my mind i that that really just cracks me up I, i'm to be real honest with you joe i'm speechless 
I mean, I cannot believe they're even considering going and helping these nut jobs. I mean, it's a gift from God. It's, it's a gift from God. It's it's sort of like if you believe in God. It's sort of like you're in the hospital, you're sleeping. It's midnight. The nurse comes in, wakes you up, and says she was there to help give you some sleeping medicine so you could go to sleep. I was already asleep. What are you doing? Or you're giving guys guns to shoot and kill these people in ISIS. But you're going to go help them with their disease control so they don't die. So we're only allowed to shoot healthy targets. Um, okay. That's that, a mission that objective that out? I would love to have had when I was in the Army. Excuse me, but are you feeling okay for me to shoot you? Is that what we have to go through now? Um, um, do, I, do I need we, to send uh, the UN in to fix you up before I can blast you away? Before we engage I mean, here, uh, we just have a few questions for you. Um, question number one, how do you feel? Uh, I'm a little under the weather. Okay, all right. So that takes us then to question two. Have you now or ever been a part of the Communist Party? I'm a little under the weather. Okay, so uh, uh, NyQuil and uh, three aspirins, and we'll shoot you in the morning. I guess that's the deal. So you have to wait till they're healthy before you can kill them. I just I don't get that, man. I don't okay, get but that. okay. So so I'm gonna, I'm with the World Health Organization. I had so no I'm going to go down and mm-hmm. I'm going to help ISIS cure their Ebola. Yep. So and that so the they, Americans and can then, go and kill so them. And so then they and then then I'll say you know I love Jesus or something like that and then they'll cut my head off. Yeah. I mean, and, it's just a great thing. And then shortly thereafter, then we'll go in and actually kill them dead anyway. Right. I just don't. Maybe. I don't. I don't get it. I, there are just some things that just. <laughs> There's no sense to it. Mind-boggling. No sense to it. This is like a gift from God to let the bad guys just go die. You know, right? I just I just love that title of that book. I think it's Oz Guinness, A Free People's Suicide. I just feel like that's what we're doing. <clears throat> we're just, whatever we can do just to kill ourselves off. That's like the enemy. Do you remember Iraq, when, you know, when we were in Kuwait the first time? The bad guys, we were dropping food for these guys. On their, we're dropping food for them because they're starving to death. They're the enemy. Let them starve. So what is it you do? You drop the food first and then the napalm? And then you sh- That's right. I mean, is it, is it to cook the food? Yep. Well, you I mean, cook, the, I... cook, the, cook the insurgents and the food, come in and eat and, you know, clean up. I love that. That's a good campaign. Oh, man. KP duty there. Yeah. Well, it's been a good second hour. We prognosticated a little bit on 2015. We've got... Good things happening. I think we've had some good calls. We've had some positive influence. Really and truly. I mean, in all the joking and the humor that we do, just trying to, you know, let me laugh at some of the stupidity you that we do. We have to laugh. We have to laugh at it. And, you know, we we sound like we're a little goofy, but we just have to we have to be able to laugh at ourselves sometimes and say, you know what? Yeah, I want to take things seriously and I want to be able to do things right. But we've really got to, at the end of the day, get involved. We've got to Get off of our behinds and do something. doesn't matter what it is. Get on the radio. Go run for office. Go down, hand out pamphlets. Make sure people know when they're coming in to turn in their ballots that uh, their ballots may be read by other people and people will know how. I mean, do something. Let you say, and, and support people financially. If you if that's your gift of making money, you if you're great at making money, help out the liberty movement. That's right. And support their businesses, support their causes. Just, you know, help these people out, man. In the next hour, we've got coming Matt up. Arnold. And his organization is? Campaign Integrity. No, watch that. Yeah, Campaign Integrity. Watch that. I got it right. You got it right, finally. And um, that's an organization that definitely could use some financial support. I'm sure that there's probably also some uh, some things that you could physically do, you know, to get involved. And uh, when Matt comes on, I'm going to call him Major because he is an orificer. Um, so we'll talk to him when he comes on at the up and coming hour and find out what's going on with uh, <clears throat> some of the lawsuits that are in. We had him on on Ken's show on Monday. You said last week. Was it, it was, Monday? Yeah, it was just. It was just it this week? Of, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. my gosh. No, it was last year. Last year. <laughs> what? Thank you. It was last, it was last year. year. So I was wrong on the week. Yeah. I had the right beginning letter. Yeah, it was last year. Oh, that's even year, got the wrong one. Week. We can. Ah, jeez. It's still too early for me. See, it's, it's great that we can bring uh, guests back year to year. You year know. to year. Yeah. <laughs> bring them back every once in a hey, while. Hey, we've been on KLZ for two years now. We have been. And like in, in less than seven days. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's not too bad. That's pretty fantastic. Um, yeah, but uh, if, if you think you've got something to contribute, whatever it is, find out 
where you can plug in. I mean, you got Jen Rafi. She's, uh, she's, she's, fantastic. she's fantastic doing things. You got people like Marilyn, uh, Marks. Marilyn Marks, who's a, a watchdog for elections and election integrity. And then you've got show hosts like us and Randy and Ken and John and, and grass. I mean, all these people that are really trying Christina to. Christina Chris, Cook. Christine, Christine Cook, Christina. Christina Cook. Cri- Christina. That's her official name. Oh, okay. She allows her friends to call her Chris. Uh, well, there you go. Well, we are uh, coming up on the top of the hour here. I realize that um, it's two hours down. We've got one hour left. Let's see if we can actually make the most out of it. Since we've got the time, wake up with Randy Corcoran show here on KLZ and the first live show of 2015. Hey, it's Randy Corcoran. Thanks for listening to the podcast of our show, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. Don't forget, I'm chairman of the Arapahoe County Tea Party. Our meetings are the second Tuesday of every month at 6.30 p.m. with candidates, elected officials, and topics of interest to freedom lovers everywhere. No matter where you're listening, please find us on Facebook and Google the Arapahoe Tea Party. Wake up with Randy Corcoran, who's not here right now, but you have woken up with, and hopefully we're helping you to wake up, Joe and Dan America filling in for Randy on this fantastic January 2nd, 2015, first live show on KLZ. Welcome. So do you think Randy has woken up yet this no. morning? Or That's what still, I was still in? If, if I were him and still on vacation, in. I'd be sleeping. Yeah. Still. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes when your when your circadian rhythm kind of gets gets stuck, you wake yeah. up whether or not you want to, and that that's the worst when you First can't all, sleep in. Back up a minute. I have no. Did you say cicada? Isn't that like a Cir- like, circadian? Circadian. I thought I was thinking you know those <laughs> little cicadas. animal cicadas. On <laughs> what the hell is that? Well, man? they'll wake you up too. They will. I was going to say that would make sense. They're a good alarm clock. I was in Athens, Greece, a year and a half ago, and they are everywhere. They're loud, loud, very loud. I had no idea how loud they could I be. don't even know what it is. You don't know what a cicada is? No. They're the locusty looking things that yeah. are about that big, and you see them. Well, I don't know. Well, you, you grew up in a crazy part of America. Down in, in Texas, you'd see uh, bug body exoskeletons attached to trees and everything. They're about that big. And then you'd see them flying around. They're, they look like big bumblebees with big wings, and, and they make a lot. they they're mostly that in the noise. evening you hear them, like yeah. right, right when it turns dusk, and they uh, they can be loud. I, I don't yeah. think we had those in Iowa. No, they're more like a southern kind of thing. I don't think you get that them makes much sense. Here. Yeah, but we did have Captain Kirk though. Ooh, well, there you go. Well, there you go. Yeah. That's really amazing. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll introduce our guest and 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 what we're talking about here this afternoon and the or this afternoon this morning in the third hour. I've got this right this time. Army Major Matt Arnold. With Campaign Integrity Watchdog. That is correct. Although I, I just have to do the usual disclaimer, I'm not here representing the U.S. Army or the United States military or, or any any branch of the government for that matter. Any uh, ex- Jews and expressions are, of course, my very own. Okay, since these are your very own expressions, what are your thoughts of B-52s and bacon bombs? <laughs> Over the he's Middle the East, Army. not just your he's, own he's, opinion. He's, he's okay, Army. he doesn't have to answer that. You, you know, if you go back to the very first uh, insurgency the United States fought against, Muslim insurgents over 100 years ago in the Philippines, and General Black Jack Pershing um, was a very effective counterinsurgency fighter at the time. Now, obviously, a lot of things that were done then could not be done now in a, in a uh, an age of you know universal mass media. But one of the things that he did do was you know dip bullets in, in bacon grease, and he would bury. Um, Killed insurgents with slaughtered pigs. So yes, and why don't we do that? They don't war. Yeah, we we're, have to play so, nice. You know why? Kind you of gentler why, world. Now. Do you know why the Brits lost to us? Because they marched in straight lines. They fought like gentlemen, and they wore red outfits with great big white crosses on them. Easy targets for people dressed in brown and green drab hiding in trees. Why don't we fight like the bad guys fight? Well, and. You know, we don't we don't fight quite like the bad guys fight, and and you know the the red coast thing it, it's a bit of a misnomer because the Brits towards the end of the war got a little bit more clever and and you know actually has some tactics, but too little too late maroon right. But the uh, the general principle is correct. You have to understand your enemy. You have to know how they fight, and you have to you have to fight them you know at least somewhat on their terms, and you've got to right. take the fight to them. That's right, and not try to to play by Marquis of Queensbury rules. And that's what we do, and that's why we can't 
beat these idiots because we want to play nice. We haven't won a war since World War II. You know, I am all in favor of putting women's underwear on their heads and, and reading, you know, and showing disgusting uh, drawings of, of Muhammad, cartoon depictions of him. I'm all in favor of doing that. Absolutely. I don't have to even drip water. I'm good with just doing things that mentally make them melt down. Yeah. Sure enough, if it'll get them to talk, to do anything, I'm, I would. That, that's not what we're here for today. Is that what we're here for this morning? Talk about that. Although I still think, but some of the lessons, rain. a lot of the lessons do apply to politics, though. And and yeah. uh, you know, Carl Clausewitz's very famous aphorism that war is nothing but an extension of politics by other means also applies in the reverse. And politics really is is an expression of of war, frankly. And and you know, if you guys have talked on this show and other folks have. Right now, we are in a war, and we are in a war within the Republican Party. And, and you know, the, the recent news came coming out about John McCain basically affecting a purge of liberty precinct people in Arizona and, and doing so with a lot of money. I mean, folks, this is a battle. This is a war. And, and what the establishment has been doing in Arizona and Colorado and nationwide, they have openly declared war on conservatism. The they have yeah. declared war on the liberty movement. They are all about keeping power and control and not actually about advancing liberty and, and freedom. And, and, you know, it's... But, yeah, but keep one thing in mind before we all you know get off the razor blades and the ropes and the trees and all that kind of stuff, is that they did the exact same thing when Reagan was trying to run for president. They did. They've gotten a bit more sophisticated about it, yeah. but they, they have. And this, this has been going on for a while, and certainly we can win. We have the numbers. We simply lack at this point the organization and the resources and, and some of the tools. Can we can we also find a way to control the messaging so that people who are listening and are paying attention and wondering what is this all about, they would actually get a clear, concise, uh, understandable and doable plan for how to move forward? Because as your Joe American guy, I still don't. I, Tea Party, Liberty Movement. Right. Conser- I, who the hell am I listening to? What, what, what am I doing? Where am I going? Uh, I don't know what's going on. Well, I do think part of the thing that we do have to do is expose the corruption in our own party. And, and you know, in, in any kind of war, one of the things you have to do is make sure that people fighting on your side are, are actually on your side. The very right. worst thing you can do is be in a war and, and Not know who get the shot is. or stabbed no. in, in the back. And that's what we have been experiencing in, in the Liberty Movement and in the, in the Republican Party, for that matter, that people we think are our friends and allies and, and believe the things that we do don't. They, they flat out don't. And they, you know, they are wearing our label. They have infiltrated our party and are pursuing an agenda that has nothing to do with the stated goals of the Republican Party and, and of the conservative movement. Yeah, they infiltrated our party quite a while ago. Yes. And now it's up to us to take it back. Right. And to some extent, you know, some of them actually might have started out as, as thinking the right way, and they just got corrupted by power. And part of the problem is these people stay in office. So long. Way, way, way too, too long. long. I mean, you know, even McCain did some decent things early on, but, dude, you're you're past 80. Or laurels. 80. Living and working on laurels in his Give dream past. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the fact that, you know, taking a, a local take, we have never had a three-term state party chair in the state, yet Ryan Call is running for a, an unprecedented third term as state party chair. Why? Well, because now it brings in a six-figure salary plus expenses and, and you know access to a lot of resources and, and the levers of power. That's why he wants to stay in, not because he's been effective or even has a real agenda to advance so, policy. So what you're telling me is that Ryan Call... Brings in a six-figure salary, yeah, that which, and we which still every have, Republican is paying for. And we still have a Democrat governor yeah. and a Democrat-run uh, state house. house during a sweep year for Republicans. Right. Nice. I mean, even Illinois now has a Republican governor. Yeah. Yeah. I, let's face so it. What's up? It, you is, know, is Colorado really? Are we really California now? No. I don't think We're so not. either. And, and the way you can tell that is look at the other statewide races, which are kind of, you know, the best metric for, well, how does the populist vote just kind of generic? If you, if you close your eyes and all you knew about the candidate was one's a Democrat, one's a Republican, statewide, all of the statewide races went Republican. Why? Because Colorado is still 
a center right state. We are we're a state that I think is very much in kind of the tradition of, you know, the Barry Goldwater Republicans. Hey, leave me alone. I don't care what you do in, in your own bedroom. Not my business. But you know what? I want to have the freedom to live my life as I want, and I don't want you reaching your hand deep into my wallets and taking everything I own and trying to control me. I want to be able to buy a regular toilet. Yes. I'd like to buy a standard capacity magazine legally here in Colorado. There are a whole bunch of things that that we as free people should be able to do, but unfortunately our our Colorado legislature and our, our Denver governor have signed some pretty bad things into law. I love what Biden said. Get a double barrel shotgun, fire two shots as, a, as, as opposed to it's a double barrel, there's only two shots. But into the air. In, yes, into in the, the air. air. Don't, so don't even shoot it at the door. Don't even shoot it at the door with a bad guy's trying to come to you. Shoot it into the air. Which, putting a hole in your in Which, your by the way, is, is a felony. Yeah, by shooting. Uh, that's right, up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? He's advocating us to perform a felony? Yes. Nice. Perform yeah. or commit either commit, one. I commit a felony. You know, it's still before eight. Yeah. If you follow Joe Biden's advice, you, you will jail. likely end up in jail. And you should. Nice. Because well, that's I'd completely. <laughs> any Democrat, you follow any of their advice, it. you'd end up in jail. You know, like steal, lie, cheat, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's right. I'm talking about you. That's right. I said it. I'm talking about you, you people out there. You lying, cheating. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Uh, that's, gonna, that is authentic frontier gibberish right there. That is right. <laughs> so uh, we've got um, a brain death here. Matt Arnold. Matt Arnold, thank you. Major Matt Arnold. Campaign integrity watchdog. And, uh, and doing something that I just think needed to be done a long time ago. Is suing people. S- serving papers under Ryan Call. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's this is a great and, and kind of uh, entertaining new development. So Ryan Call was the uh, the brain father, um, perhaps the brain flatulator, of this, this idea, the so-called Colorado Republican Party Independent Expenditure Committee. Now that's a that's a complete. Well, it's first off, it's a complete oxymoron because an independent expenditure committee, by definition, can't coordinate with the party, cannot coordinate with any candidate. Is that what that independent means? That would be the independent part. Yeah, words don't matter. Funny funny about that. So Ryan Call had had this wonderful idea to get around Colorado's campaign finance laws, and in you know, in principle, I. I would support anything that would knock down contribution limits to candidates or parties because I think that's an unconstitutional infringement of free speech. But I'm not in support of these little lawyerly shenanigans and end arounds to try to carve out a special exception or exemption for this for the state party. And that's what Ryan tried to do with this IEC. And it's it's a complete joke because he's he's saying on the one hand, well, this is an independent expenditure committee. It's under no control or influence of the party, yet it bears the party name. I mean it's a flat out you know, contradiction in terms right off the bat. This is not a Chevrolet in any way, shape, or form. Pay no attention to the Chevy emblem on the on the vehicle, on the vehicle right. or the name Malibu. Just ignore that completely. Not a Chevy. Exactly. It's about the drones you're looking for. Exactly. And, and you know, the Jedi mind trick apparently worked to some extent on, <laughs> on a Denver District Court judge um, when Ryan took, the, took that to court and, and got challenged on that. And, and, and um, he was challenged by, you know, someone on the left. And, and <laughs> fortunately for Ryan, he wasn't up against a very good lawyer. And the judge in that case said, well... I'll, I'll let you do this. Uh, you know, it never actually went to trial. And, and on the merits, they had no no opportunity to gather evidence. But say, well, unless you can prove coordination, um, yeah, you're free to you're free to have this IEC because under the law it says that any person can form an, an IEC under Colorado law. Well, okay, let's take that then to the, uh, the the logical conclusion. If any person can form an independent expenditure committee, well, is is a candidate a person? Yep. Absolutely. So a candidate could form a an independent expenditure committee. So candidate, form an independent expenditure yeah, committee. I'm running for I'm running for state legislature, and the campaign finance rules say I can only accept a maximum of four hundred dollars from anyone to support my campaign, which I think is an unconstitutional infringement, personally. And I think that law should be struck down. But you know, because I'm chafing at this limit, I've got a couple of great friends with really deep pockets. 
going to write me big checks. I'm going to form the Candidate X Independent Expenditure Committee, and I'm going to appoint my brother-in-law and cousin and, uh, you know, high school buddy to be on the board of this thing and, and run it for me. Now, I won't coordinate with them, and, and you know, they won't. I won't be communicating with them during the campaign, but, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, give to the Candidate X Independent Expenditure Committee, and you can give unlimited amounts. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. <laughs> yes. Does that really make any kind of sense whatsoever? No. No. And, well, that's, but that's exactly what Ryan Call has done with his IEC. Well, as part of the uh, process in, in bringing this organization to trial, and there are a number of, of allegations, not all of which have to do with coordination, but one of them does. And Ryan Call is, you know, has publicly stated this is his brainchild. He, he set it all up. So, you know, he got subpoenaed to produce documents that talk about the extent of his coordination. He was properly served. Um, actually, the, the morning of the executive committee meeting a week ago today, I think, and apparently it blew a, completely blew a gasket in that meeting, ranted and raved and, and screamed my name in vain, which, you know, I, I just about <laughs> heard it from outside. Bad and uh, then he was served. Well, now he's saying, well, I wasn't. I wasn't served in person. wasn't ha- physically handed to me. Is he an attorney? He is an attorney. So numbnuts should know it doesn't matter if you are personally handed the paper or not. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it's a completely uh, fatuous and 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 hor- you know just just it, the argument doesn't hold water. And he should know that. And and they are trying to do that. And now they went out and hired. It, it, here's the thing. Ryan Cole is an attorney. Ryan Call is, he touts that as one of his strengths. And in fact, when, when, uh, this IEC thing was going on and, and I, I asked him, look, hey, Ryan, how do you square the circle of Colorado Republican Party and IEC? It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. And his response was, well, I'm a lawyer. Are you a lawyer? I was like, well, no, I, I play one on TV sometimes. Well, I'm a lawyer and I know better than you, so shut up and I'm, I'm good to go with this thing. No, I'm not a lawyer, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. There you go. So his arrogance and and failure to understand and follow the law has essentially been what landed this organization in hot water, and it landed his his donors in hot water because they fa- failed to follow the law when they gave these uh, you know ten twenty twenty five thousand dollar checks to this organization Oops. because you know they have certain uh, certain requirements that they have to follow as well. So Ryan Call set up the party, he set up this organization, he set up his donors for for failure by failing to understand and follow the law himself. And he's making it worse by, A, confirming that he did, in fact, coordinate with his organization um, by being the source of, of hiring this, this other law firm, because he doesn't have the guts. Quite, he, let me throw this out. Ryan Call, I challenge you, pajama boy, to face me in court yourself. You won't because you don't have the guts, and you know you're not a very good lawyer, and I will clean your clock. Love that. Challenge is out. The gauntlet has been thrown. The the, tsh, tsh, the glove has been slapped. It's true. But, I mean, you know, guys who are doing things wrong, you know, quite honestly, they 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 will never, ever go into an open place, open market to fight fair. Because they know no. they can't win. They're exactly. going to do everything they can to try and play dirty and fight dirty so that they can win in the back rooms and the back lots of the back deals. And that's what he's going to try and do. Right. And, well, that's what he's done in, in his entire tenure as state party chair. He's, he's tried to play dirty in primaries. He's tried to, to, to influence primaries, which is against the bylaws and against his job description. Look, if you, wanna, if you favored Mitt Romney in 2012, great. Go work for his campaign. As state party chair, it's your job to be fair and neutral and run a clean primary process. Ryan and, failed to do that. And let's be clear. He is representing the Republican Party. As a whole. All As a whole. He's not a Democrat. He's not a liberal left wing crazy guy. Well. He, well, <laughs> he is, in name only, a Republican representative. So if you're a Republican and you think that your chair, the person who's supposed to be supporting your personal views, is listening to you and doing what you want, you would be wrong. Right. And we should take care of that here in the next couple of months by That's electing right. new leadership in the party. Absolutely. Get this guy out. Get him out. 
Absolutely. What do the French say? Au revoir. Goodbye. Auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss. Do the French really say Adios? Adios? Well, the Germans say well, they, they do because they've, they picked up the German from so many Germans <laughs> being <laughs> French. Yeah, in France. Right. yeah they've yeah, occupied figure. the country so many times. Well, you know, when you join the French military, the first thing they teach you how to do is how to surrender. Yeah. Right. Uh, <clears throat> so... What, so you, but you said earlier during the break or before we came on that he also missed his deadline. So what, what, right. what does that mean? Now, is it possible that since yesterday was a federal holiday, that's right, where the government was shut down and the world did not end, it was a holiday yesterday. It so was. maybe he couldn't have responded yesterday, and he will today. Uh, unlikely. Uh, first off, because I, I gave the, the venue or the way to, to return the response as, as email and Email doesn't have take a federal it. holiday. Could right. have gotten enough. It's, it's conceivable that uh, he actually did put the documents in the mail, and, and I'll check my mailbox. But uh, maybe the North Koreans. Didn't, it didn't happen. North Koreans got a hold of his email. Right, right. That's the North Koreans hacked his hacked yep. his email. That would that would explain a think. lot, yep. actually. See, there you go. Yeah. So uh, the bottom line is, he was properly served with the subpoena. The due date was actually on January first. He failed to respond to the subpoena. He failed to file any motions. Uh, attempting to quash the subpoena, which would which would extend things while that got worked out. Basically, as I understand it, and I'll confirm the court today, he's in contempt of court for failure to respond. Right. Nice. But I mean, it, doesn't this just seem like it's a part of who he is? I mean, that's oh, what absolutely. I was just saying before. You're you're going to find ways of doing backdoor deals to. Try to win, get technicalities. I mean, like, really, somebody's actually going to say, I wasn't personally. So, this guy's got to know yeah, better. You just become suspicious of everything, then. You know that he had to have been involved in this deal to get Tom Tancredo. Oh, I, I have and no you doubt. Just, you just, you just, and you just, you lose faith in the party. You lose faith in the system. As an average Joe that doesn't get to spend a lot of time with this stuff, you just say nuts to it. When I hear, when I hear just, stuff you just like say this, nuts to it. I, I really feel like just unplugging and saying, Clearly, if our side, it, it, it's bad enough if the other side's doing crap, but if our own side can't even play right, I don't want to play at all. Uh, Wally, we've got Wally in Lakewood, who's on the phone, has got a comment. Wally, welcome to the show. How are you? <laughs> Better than I look. Thanks for asking. <laughs> and that I is true. Say, I, I was disgusted with how the Republican, the state party, handpicked Cory Gardner to run. We had a pretty good slate of candidates went into the primary, and then as soon as he announced, they started dropping off like flies. I personally think that the only reason Cory Gardner won was because of Mark Uterus's bad campaign. That was awful. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. there's a difference between winning and getting in because the other guy lost, and I, yeah. I would agree with that. And and uh, I, I've been a lifetime Republican, but I'm about ready to go independent and just say, screw the Republican Party in the state, because they keep losing every race that we there's no reason that we shouldn't have run that won that governor's race agreed well uh, okay. well welcome to the party wally i totally agree with you it is no i i'm just done with the party crap i'm done i'm finished i'm done i'm going to talk and indi- i'm going to work with and support individual people based on the things that they tell me not on a party just because i'm a party line guy but i would say you know don't don't jump ship just yet right now there there are elections coming up here shortly for county party leadership for state party leadership get involved in that get your like-minded freedom loving friends there to show up to these caucuses to to get elected as as leaders to ensure that we have the right leadership at the county level who will then elect the right leadership at the state level so we can turn this around. Because if we don't, if we simply give up and let the rat bastards have it, we will get more of the same. This is Joe and Dan America filling in for Randy. And, uh, <laughs> oh, Lord. I love me. Waylon Jennings. Come on, Joe. <laughs> yeah, and I love Waylon Jennings. I do. It's true. I do. I like him. Good hearted woman in love with a good kind of man. You know, I, I told, asked my stuff. kids, I said, you know what happens when you play a country music record backwards? I said the guy, you know, the singer gets his dog, dog back, back, his truck back, his it's wife like back, he quits drinking. You know, my kid, he looked at me and said, what's a record? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're helping officially us, getting old, aren't we? Helping us get out of this di- sad conversation. Uh, let's go to Tim in Broomfield. Tim, you're on the air. What's going on? Well, I'm, I'm enjoying you guys' conversation, and I, I believe that one of the problems we have, it isn't just about what happened in the last cycle. It's what's going to happen in the next cycle. Yeah, bingo. And so I guarantee you that Jeb Bush is the hand-selected 
nominee of the GOP oh, establishment, including the state party chair. Just shoot me now, Tim, for the love of God and all things holy. Please tell me Tim, you don't really getting believe getting my that. razor blades back out. This is bad. Well, but just just because the state party and, and, the, and the establishment want that to be our guy, we don't have to accept that. That's and, true. And, and, you know, we have to get involved. And right now we've, we've got to get involved in holding the, the party leadership accountable. This is the time to do it. Tim, who do you think should be the keynote representative of the Republican Party? Uh, ben Carson, uh, do you think should be the one representing us uh, in the Republican Party? Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. Well, I certainly wouldn't say Ben Carson because I don't think that your first elected position should be president of the United States. Yep. And it, the other thing is, is that I would love to see one of the governors that we have be the party's nominee, I think. Scott Walker's done an amazing job in Wisconsin. Bobby Jindal in Louisiana has also done an amazing job. I'm not a big fan of uh, trying to, as our current occupant of the White House, is a senator. I'm not a fan of just grabbing some senator and saying, here you go. So if he, if he hasn't got executive experience, he hasn't demonstrated his conservative bona fides via running the state from which he's governor that i'm not interrupted agreed thanks for your call tim appreciate it from broomfield good words and uh gosh so where do we go from here i mean i I kind of disagree with tim a little bit i mean i think somebody like ted cruz has been an attorney general for a major state like right ted cruz had a lot has a lot of executive experience yeah i mean he's that's what he said executive experience I, i just think that he would be be a great guy and it i guess part of my irritation with some of our process today is there's this default expectation that you got to be an attorney you've got to be already in an office somewhere what about just getting you know joe the plumber who knows how to run a damn good business who can you know who's 50 years old got a lot of good life experience has made millions of dollars in a private sector business let him run the freaking country why does he got to be an attorney and why a quick does he be because a senator? this is randy show we're not saying anything bad about attorneys I'm not saying anything bad about attorneys. Just I'm just saying, why, why is it that the expectation is that, especially since none of them ever write any of the laws that are put out anyway, what's the point of being an attorney? Why do you have to be an attorney? And I agree with that. And, and you know, Randy belongs to 5 to maybe 10% of attorneys that are that are not complete boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I was looking for the right word that I could say on air. Um you know, I say we run Randy Corcoran and Mark Zarlingo as the Republican ticket. What do you think? There you go. I think they're they're good guys. They're good lawyers and and would do the right thing. You'd be nice. The main thing is you, you want to have people that actually understand that you need to do the right thing. And and unfortunately, and I've been up against some technically good lawyers, but uh, boy, they have just not been doing the right thing. And and it, it is a battle. They will fight. To delay, to obfuscate, to to try to hide evidence. Many of them will flat out lie in court, I know, and crazy. and get away with it because you know if you can't get the discovery and get get out the documentation and evidence, you you can't prove it. So there's always the issue of what you know versus what you prove, what you can prove. Right. I know for for a fact that Ryan Call coordinated with this so so called independent expenditure committee. It's a matter of what I can prove in court. Right. And that's why he went out. And, and here's the other thing. Where Where is the money coming from to hire this incredibly expensive law firm? The, the state party's broke. The IEC? Yeah. The, no, they're not. They're not paying for it. IEC doesn't have a lot of money either, right now either. So, you know, I don't know where Ryan Call thinks he's he's getting the money to, to pay for this. And, and, and it'll be interesting what, because what is that, the law firm that he's hiring to bring in? Brownstein, Hyatt, Farber, Shrek, which is the, the big, super politically connected, mostly Democrat-leaning, actually, uh, law firm here in the state. They are one of the one of the top guns, the big dogs. You know what the, I love the about the their name? Their last one is Shrek. Like Shrek the Musical. I love that. That's brilliant. Beautiful. Beautiful. So what is the next step then? What do you see happening next? You're right. We kind of talked about it over the break. Lawyers are really good. And again, Randy, with all due respect, dude, I love you, man. They're going to find a way to drag this out right. and make it last as long as possible because hey, Americans, hours, right? Americans have short attention spans. If we can get bored with it in a week... 
What are we talking about? Make it last. What are you talking about? <laughs> Squirrel. That, that's exactly what they'll try to do, and and we're already seeing that in in a couple of these cases. You know, they're uh, they're dragging it out. They're trying to to quash subpoenas and and keep the actual truth from coming out in court. Keep the evidence from coming to the fore. That's that's what they'll try to do. Suppress the evidence. You know, argue in, in circles and, and, and try to drag this thing out. And, and it's my job to try to, to keep fighting and, and keep on them. And, you know, that's why the, uh, the, the watchdog, the campaign integrity watchdog mascot is a bulldog. The bulldog, when it fights, it, it sinks his teeth into, into the thing and holds on. So let's talk about supporting your organization. What do they do? Where do they go? How can they help financially support? Because you are obviously against a monolith right now. Yeah, well, a big juggernaut. Um, yeah, campaignintegritywatchdog.org is the website. You can also find us on Facebook, Campaign Integrity Watchdog. You can email me at campaignintegritywatchdog at gmail.com. And on all those, you can find a uh, – there's a, a GoFundMe page set up uh, just a few days ago to help defray the cost of this stuff. And, and it's, I'm not taking a dime out of this for myself. I do not pay myself for this. But there are costs that are that are incurred: filing fees, uh, you know, production of documents, production serving of exhibits, subpoenas, all of that. serving yeah, yeah. subpoenas, all that kind of stuff costs costs money. So every bit helps. I mean, you know, a twenty-five to fifty dollar contribution that's a that's a subpoena served. Um, you know, uh, production of documents, even even ten twenty dollars, that that could be you know the printing out of, of a few exhibits that are going to be necessary to go to trial. So every bit helps, and we are up against a very well funded, very well resourced, and and quite frankly, very politically powerful set of folks that are trying to control elections and control the government here in Colorado. We the people have got to fight back. This is one of the tools that we, the people, have to hold these people accountable for violating the law. And, and as we talked about on an earlier show, the only way to do this is for private entities, either individuals or groups like Campaign Integrity Watchdog, to file these complaints and to act as police investigator and, and prosecutor in court because Nobody the else state doing won't it. do it. That's all right. Well, have you considered setting up your own IEC to help fund this? <laughs> yes, the Matt Arnold candidate IEC. <laughs> hey, if it worked for uh, some of these other people, and and just to be clear, part of the reason for why we're arguing against this is we're basically finding we we've created rules that say you can only take so much money, and now that we've created these rules, we want to find ways to get around these rules. Right. So here's an easy thing: just get rid of the rules. Just stop Stop telling me how much I can or can't well, donate. And I agree. I, I think that the, the contribution limits to can that's part of why this all this stuff goes out to these, these secret groups, because candidates can no longer control the message. When, when the candidates have to spend all their time getting money in, in small bits, I mean, $400 is not a lot to, to run a statewide campaign. No. It's pretty tough. So what happens? All the money finds a way, and it goes to these these groups that are not accountable, that that pretend that oh uh, we're we're independent, right? Mm-hmm. And and are not accountable to the people. That's the problem. I think you get rid of the contribution limits. You keep the disclosure so people know. Hey, you know if, if you know Mister Moneybags is trying to buy an election, I want to know that. That's right, and that's why I guarantee you. That's why this entire thing is set up the way it is, oh, so that people can hide money in their donations that nobody knows that somebody's trying to buy an election. Right. And and play in primaries, which is completely against the Republican Party bylaws. That's why this thing was set up, to be Ryan Call's personal slush fund so he could pick and choose candidates wants. in the primaries. And, and you look at the pattern of spending, that's where, that's where all the money was coming in and being spent. Matt, thanks so much for being on. One more one more time with the website. CampaignIntegrityWatchdog.org or on Facebook, Campaign Integrity Watchdog. Wake up with Randy Corcoran. I love it. I don't know who it does that. Wake scared. up, Dana Lash. Dana Wake Lash. up. Wake up with Randy Corcoran. Uh, Joe and Dan America filling in for Randy B. Corcoran this morning. And um, it's been a attorney good three hours. Down. Yeah, yeah. A, 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 a loving attorney that we all care for, yeah, along with Mark. Sergeant. We love you guys. It's like a radio love affair. That's awkward. It is awkward. And thanks for sharing that, Zach. Next time, I want him sitting across from me, not next to me. It's a little awkward. Um, It is kind of cozy here. It is kind of cozy. It feels good. Uh, We've got Randy Mills on the line who's calling in. I guess he's going to give us an update on 1787. What's going on, Randy? Hey, wake up. 
Yeah, we're I'm trying, away. man. I'm trying. I've had four oh. cups of coffee already. Right here between the two Americas. That's How right. Cool, that huh? You gotta <laughs> love right. it, man. Hey, yeah. happy New Year! Happy, happy New Year, 2015. Yeah. So what's happening? I mean, I I want to buy an election. How do you do that? Uh, first, start in IEC. Apparently, yep. uh, get in with the get lawyer. in with the Republican right. Party because we've got it nailed down on how to do this the right way, and uh, get millions of dollars donated to you. Ooh, okay. Yeah, we okay. can do that. Sounds great. So what's happening? Well, hey, that hey, what is going on with Revive seventeen eighty seven? You know, I've been I've been kind of out of the loop a little bit, but you've got some great stuff coming up on our monthly butterfly effect meetings, and I was hoping you could explain that a little bit because you know, Joe and I, we want people to become informed, and and you know, we always have um, Joe and I, we always talk about talk about biblically based stuff and Revive seventeen eighty seven, biblically based, constitutionally based. What have you got going on coming up here? And I guess it all starts on next Thursday. Yeah, free burritos. Oh, oh we're in. Free, free burritos. Yeah. Best of show on our show Thursday because we're going to go eat free burritos. You know, we've been doing Butterfly Effect now for uh, like two years, right, Dan? And, yep. um, you know, we just wanted to talk somewhere between the brackets of virtue and liberty. And uh, this year, 2015, we thought we'd get our act together a little bit. Not a whole bunch, but a little bit. For um, us, a little bit would be a big help. Yeah, and, and so you know we're going to kind of go down this series. We're going to we're going to go searching for the birth of freedom, and um, so we've got a seven part series. We've got you know the butterfly effect on the second Thursday of each month, free burritos each month, and it's a six forty five to about eight a.m. thing. You know, it's a breakfast meeting, and uh, we've got some great speakers that are lined up, and we're just kind of kind of walk through this search for you know where did freedom start? I mean. You know, maybe it started in the 70s with, you know, uh, uh, Barbara Streisand. I mean, free again, you know. <laughs> hey, Joe is personal God. friends with Barbara Streisand, just with so you know. Him. It's true. Oh, let's go back a little further. Maybe it's Andy Williams, you know. For free, free <laughs> blows. I mean, that could be the start, the genesis of it, but we're not quite certain. So we're going to try to debunk it a little bit. I don't think anybody really has a clue where real freedom begins. No, because, you know, Paul was confused. You know, that's the Apostle Paul, because I think he wrote about it in Galatians, but then but then it was Colossians, but no, wait, was it Colossians, Joe? I mean, I, I think, you know, no, neither Gentile or Jew or circumcised, ouch, or, or uncircumcised, you know, barbarian, civilized, I don't know. But then in Galatians, he flips, and he does the same thing, I, you know confusing i don't know it is and you know what what i think as dan and i talk about it all the time gotta really start at the basics of where real freedom comes from and what is real freedom and you know i think as christians as believers we know that the first and foremost place that our freedom comes from is freedom in christ and yeah. and and once you understand that then you've acknowledged the creator and if you acknowledge the creator then you you have to acknowledge what inalienable rights are what those what those inalienable rights are that we've tried to procure over the last 200 and some odd years and yeah. and still fight for today what does that really mean cuz it's easy to see Randy and I mean I know that you're you do regular business out there in the world and you come across all kinds of different people if if you don't believe in god if you don't have a belief in god it's probably going to be really hard to believe that there are some inalienable rights that are attributed to you by being human on this planet. And and maybe that's where some of the corruption has come in in the last 50 years of our country or 100 years since progressivism has really kind of taken hold. Maybe because we're really putting aside the creator part. And without that, what's the point? What's What's the big deal? You know, that's exactly what we're going to explore. I mean, it's kind of unique with uh, this America that fits between Joe America and Dan America, left coast, right coast. The founders called it a self-evident truth. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure we're all at that point right now where it's self-evident, but we're going to explore it, and um, we're going to welcome you guys to come in. Anybody, everybody, starts about 645. We network a little bit and kind of get underway about 705, Douglas County Fairgrounds. Who's going to be the first speaker? Well, it is Father Theron Walker. Nice. 
yeah. my pastor, by the way. From Emmaus Anglican Church. Anglican Church, where everybody's well armed, just letting you know. Just what's right. That's right. <laughs> Concealed or otherwise. That's right. January 8th, uh, Civilization Without Slaves, and Father Walker's going to explore this. It's going to be great. Um, so come on out. Oh, fantastic. And you can find more information, I'm assuming, on the website, revive1787.com. And, of course, we have the Revive 1787 Facebook, and we'll have all that information up there for everybody to look at. So love to see everybody there. Free burritos, man. Free, and they're Benny's burritos, usually, which are just the best ever. I just wish you guys didn't start at 6.45 in the morning. What is wrong with you people? It's insane. It's crazy. It's like being here at How five. about, okay, so for people like me, is it possible to do 6.45 p.m. maybe once in a while? Do something in the evening? Well, you know, some folks start work around 8 a.m., not 11 a.m., Joe. Yeah, well, uh, some of us also work till 1 and 2 o'clock in the morning and don't oh. go to bed at 8 p.m., Randy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Never call Randy at 8.05. It's over. It's over. He's done. Hey, Randy, thanks so much for being on, Thank man. You. 1787, right, Every the butterfly effect. Every month. Yep, second Thursday of every month. Second Thursday every single month. Got to do it. Thanks so much, Randy, for being on. Appreciate it. And, Dan, it's been good uh, hanging out and doing uh, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran show this morning. It has been great been being the first live show of 2015 on KLZ. And so we are officially in our second year here at KLZ. Second, second year at KLZ. Year. Zach, it's been a pleasure and been fun working with you. Why does it sound like it's, it's you know, all over? Well, because we never know if it's our last show or not. Yeah. We, we just never know. You better all... make it your best two minutes ever then. That's you right. This yeah. is an audition right now. Is right it? now. Uh, uh, well, now partly we're speechless. cloudy with uh, disabled vehicles. or. Hey, I just wanted to say something. Vehicles. i got to say this line. i got to say it. Now, since we got here this morning, it's gotten colder. It's dropped three degrees, I believe. Four, is it down to 12 or 11? 12. 12. So this is proof. That we're all going to die in the frozen, fiery flood. That is correct. The frozen, fiery flood. That's it. That would have fit well in the Noah movie. Yeah. That's true. Man-made climate disruption. So let's talk about the new lineup in 2015 for KLZ. We've still got Wake Up with Randy Corcoran, 5 to 8 a.m. And we got the business entrepreneur. After Laura ap- Ingram. After uh, Laura Ingram's from 10 to 12. Yep. And then T- eight, no, to eight to ten. Eight to ten. Eight to ten. Yeah. Sorry, eight to ten. And then ten to twelve is Experience Bros. Twelve to Scott one, one is uh, Haystack with uh, Haystack cousin, help with Scott Watley. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then one to three, Freedom Five Sixty. Three to six, Rush to Reason. And six to eight, Grassroots Radio. And of course, Dana will start now at eight p.m. That's awesome. now. Is Dennis Miller still on after Dana? For now. For now. <laughs> Yeah, yes, then it'll be then it'll be Joe and Dan America from midnight to five a.m. Hey, there you go, <laughs> twelve days a week. That's Overnights awesome. with <laughs> the Americas. Overnights with the Americas. Oh, I like that. That's Ooh, kinda... that is kind of good. Yeah. Well, it's it's been it's certainly been good. And once again, to Mr. Crawford, to everybody at KLZ, thanks for letting us kind of come in and and be a part of the the crew here as we fill in for people. I just love it. It is good. It's great. Plus the Zach juice is. Oh really man, good. I am wired now. I am. I'm awake. I have woken up and await a good a good song to end us on. So thanks for listening and uh, happy Friday to everybody and welcome to 2015. You've been listening to the podcast of Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. You can access these podcasts anytime at soundcloud.com forward slash Randy Corcoran or at our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Wake Up KLZ. Please show your support by giving us a like and a follow and leave any comments and or feedback you may have. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, please send us your name, a short bio, and the best way we can get back to you. Thanks again for listening to the podcast of Wake Up with Randy Corcoran.